Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about portfolios. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video that's called With so many people learning to code, why is there such a shortage of programmers? Hi Frederick, what is your take on portfolios then? For me it seems like the, for me it seems like that's what really matters. Even people who have the education to back up their claims needs a really really sharp portfolio to start out. I would suspect that your two friends didn't, didn't have good portfolios. I, I suppose I've talked about friends in that portfolio, that's kind of weird. I don't really have friends, do I? But I wouldn't know, obviously. That's just my take after having been lingering in the software dev YouTube realm for months now. Yeah, that's probably your problem right there. You, you, you're a, you're not a software developer. You're a fledgling you want to be person uh, type where the way that you view software development is through YouTube. And my friend, YouTube is a really shitty place to be if you want to be a programmer. I can promise you. Or rather, it's not a bad place to be if you want to learn how to write code as a beginner, but it's a really shitty place to be if you, you're going to get advice on how to actually get there. Most of the um, content creators that you find, my friend, are not actually software developers. And I hope that you should start. You, you should probably be able to figure out well, if you ever actually talk to a real programmer, uh, my friend. Most programmers do not have perfect makeup and uh, an apartment studio and hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, and you know, it's sort of kind of weird. I hope that you can relate to this. That it seems like they have. Their main revenue, uh, their main revenue stream is probably not coding related, if they have that sort of investment. So you should be a little bit critical about the people that you follow on YouTube and so forth, because portfolios, my friend, they matter if you're going to be a freelancer. They also matter if you're lucky with working in a real software company or an IT company, but that really comes down to how lucky you are. Because usually the way that people think about portfolios is that, well, if I just make a full bunch of portfolio project, that's going to be proof that I know what I'm doing. Well, that is true to a point, but the thing that really matters is what is the process of evaluation for the company? How do they evaluate if you're good or not? It's sort of like um, how I tell some people to not take it too personally if they are in an interview where they get asked a bunch of questions that they don't know. Because you can know a million things and all I have to do as the person who's doing the recruitment is to ask you about a few of the th things that you don't know. And if that's the only thing I ask you about, well then the things that you know matter, they don't matter at all. Because my evaluation isn't based on the things that you know, it's based on the things that you don't know. If you want to make someone look really stupid, just ask them about stuff they don't know anything about. And then make that, of course, you know, from your perspective as the evaluator, the thing that dictates whether they pass or they fail. It's sort of like, if you don't, uh, if you don't know uh, higher mathematics or something like that, well, then just go and take a test, and everybody's going to assume that you're in, you're an idiot, or you, then you're going to look like an idiot because you don't know that stuff. Portfolios are the same thing. You could have the world's nicest portfolio, and that doesn't matter if I didn't check that you had it before we start the interview. And that is really down to the pr the individual process of each company. The reason why I've freelancer on average has more to gain from a portfolio is because that is something that you use in many cases to to show to a customer that you can make them nice websites it's sort of like the store window of a store but when somebody is hiring a professional software developer they're not so their their process is very rarely that they go and check all your portfolio sites because trust me my friend recruiters and the people who are hiring they have hundreds of candidates that they reach out to. 
I know because unfortunately most of them are part of my process where I have to like do the second thing which is like do the code reviews and like all that stuff and interviews and so forth and so forth and my friend usually the way it goes is that the recruiters don't do anything besides look at your CV and if your CV catches their eye and you have links to portfolios or links to GitHub accounts or things like that, they might use that to say, hmm, gut feeling, does this seem like a good individual to reach out to? Hmm, yes, gut feeling, it seems like a good person to ask if they're interested in this role. And then they will do that. But the main focus for a recruiter is not to check your portfolio or anything like that it is to present you to a company of people who are going to like review your whatever and that process it's it's different for every company i can tell you right now that as part of the recruitment process at the company that i worked last at we didn't check portfolios i have never checked a single person's portfolio i don't even check your cv because i don't need to because the part of our process is that you do the code test before I even get to see your CV. Which means that if you've done the code test, I can immediately tell if you know how to code. And your CV doesn't really matter until I am unsure or until we meet or like we go f further and say that and basically I see that yeah you solved the problem it seems to be a decent solution and then we do the personal interview and in the personal interview I once again is actually really really rare that I need to see your CV because I don't care where you have worked and I don't care how long you have worked because I know enough about software development to be able to figure out if you're going to be able to do the job that we need at this specific company and the times that people look at years of experience and stuff like that is usually either when they don't know anything about software development or when they're going to have a think about how much should we pay you? Like you sort of like what seniority level or like what sort of expectations are you probably coming in with? Because guys I've worked, I've interviewed guys who are, they've been working for 20 years and they're not worth more than a mid-level or a junior-ish salary because they're actually really bad at software development. And I have met prodigy level software developers who are like in their early 20s but are so good that they could probably lead a team and should probably be paid thereafter but unfortunately that's not usually up to me as the person who's just doing the evaluation. But the thing that you really should remember is that the, all that stuff is in specific and individual to my company and in the company I, the job I had before we had a different process and in the company before there was a different process there are common elements but I can tell you right now my friend it's been far from every candidate where the portfolio even passed my eyes it's never been relevant practically so you shouldn't bet everything on that portfolio uh, that your portfolio is nice it's, it's much more complicated than that so what I want you to take away from this is that no, portfolios are not the most important thing. It is not the thing that you know my friends or whatever did wrong. What is important is that you have a CV. Like most of the time, the recruiters are only going to look at your CV. Most of the time, they're only going to look at the impression they get from how many years of experience do you have, how many side projects do you list, and like t the tech, especially years of experience and tech. These are the two main things that they are always going to check. And then the portfolio is a nice enhancement, but nice enhancements, guys, doing like Stack Overflow stuff or YouTube stuff or like anything that sort of indicates to the gut feeling of this random person that you don't know ahead of time, you don't know what they're looking for. Uh, it's really hard to figure out what people want or what they like, what they're looking for, because each recruiter is different. These things are nice to have, and you should add a few of these things, but you shouldn't bet on that this is the thing that's going to be the main thing. What you should focus on is to get years of experience, get really good at the tech, and have a strong, solid understanding of software development. That is the thing that is going to get you hired. The CV is just a way for people to figure out if they want to contact you to begin with. So the portfolios, yeah, add a few of those, but don't make that the whole thing. That's not the meat. That the, your knowledge and the, like all the stuff that actually matters, the coding skills and so forth, that is where the meat of your, of your focus should be. And 
you should know that in many cases your portfolio never even it's never going to get a visit from the recruiter because they are interviewing they are looking guys they are talking to hundreds of people and they don't have time or interest in checking out every person's personal portfolio and like evaluating going to the source or whatever you think that they're doing in the best case scenario they might just glance and see yeah this was a pretty cool website we should probably talk to that person but as you can imagine that's far from the norm because yes i said most companies have different ways of evaluating how good someone is or if they're going to give them a job or not freelancers it might be more relevant because usually that is more of a shop store type of situation where the portfolio is your way to show to your customer that i can make you these nice websites if you hire me have a great day